Okay, so as we get into this video, the first thing you may want to know is whether or not this video applies to the motor on your boat. I've put up on the screen there a list of all the boat motors that have the exact same fuel rail that my boat has. So the assumption is that if you have one of these different types of motors on your boat, it's probably something that's similar enough to mine, if not identical, that you could use this video. Let's talk about replacing the fuel filter on these Mercury motors. It's going to be the same process that you'll use on a lot of their different engines. I love these little quick disconnects that they've gone to. As you can see, this little black line comes in for the fuel. And there's a red thing on the top of that that I can press down. And when I press down, I should be able to just pull this backwards. And then there is a little cradle that this is sitting in right here, and it is meant for you just to pop it up out of there if you need to. You get just enough room there to where it makes it a little bit easier to get this off and on. But I do want you to take note of one thing. Before you take this off, look at the new one. Look at the old one. Make sure you know the orientation that this goes. You see this thicker cap on the left side, and here it is in my hand, and it's on this left side. So that's the direction this is going to go in. So now I can kind of just set this somewhere. I'm just going to set this over on the boat for a moment. Okay, and so what I'm going to do on mine, because this is not turned in the upright position, is I'm going to use the smallest little screwdriver I can find. And I'm basically, what I'm doing on this one by pushing this down, I'm going to do the same thing on this disconnect right here. And when I get it pressed down thoroughly, then I will start pulling. And as you can see, once you do that, it pops loose pretty easy. Now, I don't have fuel running everywhere. If you're thinking this is just going to shoot fuel everywhere and explode and going to cause a lot of issues, I don't think you're going to have to worry about that. Uh, the motor's off. I don't see any kind of fuel trying to, to blow out of the tube or anything like that. You may want to have a couple of paper towels handy uh, if you do see a few drops come out of there that you want to wipe up. So now I've got the new one in my hand. Remember the orientation. The larger cap on mine specifically is on the left side. So the first one I'm going to do is this one. It's the least flexible of the two. And so I'm going to start over on this side. And I'm just going to listen for a click. When I, did you hear the click when I pushed it in? And so what I'm going to do then is just take this one. I'm going to put it down in the cradle. And this just pops on. Now listen for the click and watch. No problem. You are ready to go. Okay, so one thing you're going to need to know pretty quick is that I'm going to call this a fuel rail fuel filter, though I don't see it called that online. I don't see it called that on the Mercury Parts catalog either. But the reason I'm calling it that is because the difference between this and the inline fuel filter is where this one goes is up in the fuel rail. This is the fuel rail on the Pro XS motor, and it is probably pretty much the same on even the larger motors except I would imagine that on the V8s or uh, V6s, you probably have two fuel rails. Yep, I confirmed it. You do. But uh, on mine, it's an inline four, and the fuel rail filter's located on this side of the engine. Okay, so I've moved the camera up close, and what I want to show you is this is the fuel rail, and this is a fuel injector on that fuel rail, and you're going to find four of these injectors. And where this one's located is all the way down here in the bottom inside that fuel rail. So you're going to have to remove this fuel rail to do this. All right, so I know that any time you make a bold statement like that, you need to be able to back that up or at least tell people why you feel that way. Okay, in this little animation, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the fuel rail represented there by the flashing orange and white object. And I purposefully let that extend down onto the cowling because it goes down inside the cowling a few inches before it stops. And that is where it connects to the fuel line and we'll represent that here with the flashing yellow and white object. And then the red dot is going to represent where the fuel line connects to the fuel rail. And notice it is behind the cowling at the bottom of the fuel rail. 
Okay, so let's blow the fuel rail up at the bottom and take a better look at that. And again, the orange there is going to represent the fuel rail and the yellow is the fuel line. And so right in the middle of these two, you're going to see where the hose connects to the fuel rail. In order to replace the fuel rail filter, you're going to have to be able to separate that rubber hose from the fuel rail itself, which also means you're going to have to remove that clamp that you see on there. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, there's two main hurdles that you have to overcome. The first being to remove the clamp, and I'm going to show you how I did that. The second being that even once the clamp is off, you've got to be able to grab that hose and hold it and twist it around until you can pry it off the bottom of the fuel rail. I found this to be nearly impossible to do while it was connected to the boat. And so what you're going to see for the remainder of this video is the process that I used and I think it was pretty easy once I took all of these steps. And don't panic because I'm going to walk you through this in painstaking detail to make sure that you know how to do it. Alright, let's loosen the fuel rail. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start loosening these up. There are four of these. Uh, one, two, three, and four. Obviously one for each cylinder. So I've got this one loose. This one loose. Uh, this manifold is plastic, so you don't have to worry about this being like really hard to get this off. It's not hard at all. The trick to this is that the bottom bolt down here uh, is too hard to get to. So I've got a 10 millimeter wrench. I'm going to pull you in close here so you can see which one I'm currently having to deal with. It's right here. It's way down here. You could use a quarter inch drive ratchet if you wanted to. Now, if you drop this down inside this, you're gonna really wish that you hadn't. But as soon as you think you can remove it with your fingers, I would recommend you stop using the wrench and start just using your fingers to get this out. Got all these loose. There's one, there's one, and here's the final one. All right, so I have those four screws out. The next thing I'm going to do is see if there's any pressure inside the fuel rail that I want to release. You'll see this little bitty Schrader valve at the top of the fuel rail. I'm going to take this off. It's gray. And then just like you would a bicycle tire or anything that has a Schrader valve on it, if you want to check the pressure on it, you just press in on that. And I'm just going to check... I got like one drop of fuel out of that by doing that. And so I'm gonna say that's all the pressure we're gonna get out of it. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that. All right, now the next part of this I'm gonna show you is in order to pull this fuel rail out, we're gonna to have to remove these clips that are holding the fuel rail to those fuel injectors. All right, so I have moved the camera and what I'm gonna show you is the fuel clip that I'm talking about. This is the fuel injector back here. Right here is this clip that I'm referring to. And so there are gonna be four of these. They're right in front of this little bitty yellow piece of plastic right there, so it's kinda of easy to identify those. And these are going to just kinda of pop up. Okay, I've got that out of there now. And what I wanna do is show you what I'm talking about. This is the little retainer that's holding that in place. And it sits like this. This is the orientation from the angle that I'm holding the uh, camera and how I have the boat set up is these little flared out edges are on the front side. They'll be facing you when you're looking at the uh, motor in this direction. Another way to do that would be with a small flathead screwdriver. So I'm gonna go get a flathead screwdriver that I'm gonna use that to see if I can get that on the rest of those. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna use a little bitty flathead screwdriver. Put the screwdriver under the lip of that little clip like this and I just lifted up and as I turned and lifted up it just pulled it off very easily just lift straight up on it and it popped right off okay you're going to repeat that process to get all of these clips off but the one thing you're going to notice is that when you get to the fourth injector it's different the fourth injector is actually turned upside down compared to the other three and so what I did was just to remove the electrical connector for the fourth injector. So let's look at how I did that. So this is the fuel injector electrical supply for the very bottom cylinder. So I'm going to push that down. And when I do, I'm going to lift the fuel injector out at the same time. And those actually, those pop out pretty easy once you release 
that spring so you can see you can really get a good look at that spring now up close you can see what that looks like and you just push those in to pull that off okay so at this point you just reach underneath that fuel injector and disconnect that last clip and pull that out of your way so i've got that i've got one more electrical connector it's going to be way down here all right so i'm going to pull this connector up and show it to you up close the main reason that we have to get this out of the way is because it's connected to the fuel rail that we're trying to remove and it's connected to the fuel rail with a zip tie that you see there in red and white flashing and you're just simply going to cut that off use scissors or whatever is necessary okay so at this point you're probably thinking well we'll just take that now that it's loose we'll lift it up out of the cowling and we'll disconnect that hose clamp and off we go to the races and unfortunately that is just not true if your motor is like mine is i was not able to lift this up far enough to get to that clamp even as much as we've done at this point i actually found it necessary to loosen the bottom cowling up enough on this motor that i was able to split it apart in the back and pull the fuel rail out the back side now if you don't know how to do that i have created an extremely thorough video that shows you every step of the way and exactly how to do that at this point, I would recommend that you go watch that video and then come back to this one and pick up where you left off. All right, so I've got the cowling split uh, just enough to do this next step. And we've got the fuel rail completely unscrewed. All the electrical connections are still in there. The clips are off that keep the fuel rail connected to the fuel injectors. And so as you pull this away from the motor, if it starts pulling the fuel injector out with it, just stop what you're doing for a minute put the fuel injector back into the cylinder head right here in the manifold and hold the fuel injector with the screwdriver as you pop each one of these loose and you may just have to as you go down pull it but eventually you'll get the entire fuel rail disconnected and you're about to see the exact reason that we pulled the case apart in the back because it makes this next part so incredibly easy i mean look at that that's ridiculous now that we've got this outside of the cowling, we can actually get a hold of this clamp. Again, there are many, many ways to do this. To me, the easiest thing is going to be just to put a screwdriver in here and lift it up. And as soon as you do that, you've relieved all the pressure that's holding the hose on the fuel rail. Once you have that Oetker clamp off, you should be able to hold the fuel rail and spin it and get it loose. They do not make this easy. And it doesn't help at all that it's just absolutely freezing out here. So I'm gonna hold this with a rag so I can get a good grip on it. And what I'm trying to do is hold the tube in my hand. Did you hear it pop? So I've got this to where I can spin this. Now that I've got that loose, I'm simply prying it apart with my hand, trying to hold the tube. Okay, it's about to come loose. I'm gonna try, to, there we go. And there it is. The fuel rail now is completely disconnected and this is what we're after. This is the fuel filter we're trying to replace. That's what this whole effort has been for. It doesn't seem like I'm getting any fuel, much fuel. It's a drop, really. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. I'm gonna take the fuel rail. I'm gonna set that over here out of the way. Now that I've got that out of the way, I'm gonna show you the existing fuel filter versus the new one. So this should just come out of here without too much trouble. I said that, I sure hope it is. Okay, this just pulled straight up. And so we're just gonna match that, okay? You've got this one in your hand and this one looks just like it. But all we're gonna do is Put this down in this tube until it just kind of stops. And there it is. And that's what I'm calling the fuel rail fuel filter. Now let's look at reassembling all this. I'm going to bring this down here. Okay, as part of reassembling this, I'm going to be putting a regular type of hose clamp on here. If I ever have to do this again, I want this on an orientation that I can actually get it off without having to go through so much effort. I think what I'm going to recommend is that you put this like this. And then hopefully, boy, that's such a small clamp. There we go. 
I'm gonna put that right there like that. So now that I've got that, that simply is gonna go up inside there like that. And we're just gonna press this back together. There we go. It snapped right at the end. And now that I've got this spun exactly the direction I wanted, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. You don't have to tighten that down uh, like so incredibly tight that it's poking through the hose. That's good enough. Uh, yeah, you can see it's just compressing the hose in a little bit. I shouldn't really be able to spin it super easy. I can't spin it at all. So now I'm going to put this back up through the cowling. And then we're just going to kind of put this right back where it goes. I'm going to lay it right on top of all the fuel injectors. And then I'm going to just snap it into place. All right, now this is a great time because you can get to everything so easily to go ahead and put some of these things back together. I am gonna go ahead and at least put this one screw in. Just because it's gonna be so much easier to do that with this cowling off. Do not over tighten this, okay? What you're putting that into is plastic. <laughs> yes, you can break it. I'm going to go ahead and do the top one just so that I know it can't go anywhere on me. That way I know I've got the top and the bottom connected really well. I'm going to go ahead and do these two. Where I had removed this clip down here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zip tie that back just like it was. This was originally zip tied to the fuel rail. So I'm gonna put that back on just like it was. It was originally on the rubber hose. And so I'm actually going to come back down here with it. That's how I'm gonna do it. So at this point, I'm imagining that you can pretty much put all of this back together. But if you need some reminders, the first thing you're going to do is connect the bottom fuel injector power supply back to the bottom fuel injector. And then you're going to reattach the remaining three clips which hold the injectors to the fuel rail. And then finally, you're going to put the case completely back together. And just remember to use that other video as a reference because not only did I completely take it apart in that video, I also put it completely back together. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making it and um, I hope I've included the right amount of detail for people who want to know absolutely everything and for the rest of you who only needed to know a few parts, I hope you're able to find those. So thank you very much for watching this video. I wish you nothing but the best of luck out on the water. Good luck and God bless. Look at that. <laughs> I love it.